Hello everyone, today I have for you the grand finale 200 interesting car facts in GTA Online. These are all the car facts from every car facts video I've ever done with 20 new ones at the end for recurring viewers of the series. I wanted to bundle it into one video to make it easy to watch, so now let's get into them. The Cognoceni, like its real life counterpart, is extremely quiet on the inside. The Ashran's trunk has shelves that have zero collision. In story mode, the Bodhi is Trevor's vehicle and he made some personal touches to it that transferred to the GTA Online version. The Bodhi's door sound is extremely satisfying. Other cars for reference. Turn signals are a programmed feature in the game and NPCs actually use them. Unfortunately, it's been nearly a decade and Rockstar still has not implemented this feature for players to use. Any car class as a muscle car, even if it looks like it probably can't, can do a wheelie. The Romero hearse used to be an extremely rare vehicle, it only used to spawn at the church and it was much easier if another player had a Romero hearse and they helped you get one because it would boost the spawn rates of a hearse. The same can be said about the Sultan, it used to spawn in the prison parking lot and you just kind of had to find it unless another player or someone you knew had one and that would boost the spawn rates, but that too was also added to be able to purchase. As you can see here, a previously very rare car can now be purchased for just $45,000, a bargain to me. The faction is extremely twitchy around curbs. I don't know why this is, but even at the highest suspension height, it still acts very odd. The addition of any spoiler to any car, no matter the size, will improve traction. This might be hard to tell from just the footage as I can't show you how it feels to drive the car, but next time you're in online and you're customizing a vehicle, drive it a little bit before you put a spoiler on and notice the incredible difference. If you have a convertible car and then put sticky bombs on the roof and then retract the top, this will happen. If you have sticky bombs on your car and try to go in the custom shop, the mechanic will get scared and the shop will close. Damn. 
If you put sticky bombs on your car and return to the mechanic, the sticky bombs will go with it and probably blow up the mechanic. If you hit these yellow cone thingies on the freeway in a trophy truck, the panels of the truck will kind of just fall off. I feel like this one is pretty well known, but definitely worth throwing in. Whenever you turn on your lights or even high beams in some cars, they actually have a little light indicator that says that the lights are on. Once again, this is only unfortunately in some cars, but the cars that it is in are pretty cool. I could honestly look at this all day. Cars that have blowers will actually react to the throttle input that you give it. I appreciate Rockstar for actually taking the time and making this a feature. Some cars will have three pedals but an automatic shift knob. In this particular case, this car does have a manual mode but it doesn't explain why there's a clutch right there. You may as well have just made it a stick shift with the full stick instead of this automatic kind of half-hearted attempt. This is probably a bad car to showcase my point, but next time you're in a car, just take a closer look, look at the shift knob, see if it has three pedals. It probably doesn't add up. Electric cars don't have engines. This being said, if you shoot the front of an electric car where the engine would be, it doesn't do any additional damage as if you were to shoot it anywhere else. Some cars have upgrades where you can put wider fenders on the car and most of the cars that have these upgrades do not compensate for the wider fenders and they don't push the tires out anymore. This is extremely annoying as it is very common for cars to have this. You can tell if a car is front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive if you look at which wheels start spinning first. The interior of the Granger 3600 is very close to the real life counterpart or at least as close as you could get in GTA Online. As you can see from the gameplay and the picture here, they are pretty similar. The vents are in similar spots. The infotainment is right in the middle where it is in real life. And this is honestly a pretty good mock-up of how the real life version looks. At any given point, you can have up to four vehicles in your possession, which is your personal vehicle, the vehicle that Agatha Baker could provide you with, and the vehicle that Secure Serve can provide you with as well, and the vehicle that you can get by calling Lester to request the vehicle. I tried any other method of trying to get a car and none of them worked. I tried calling Pegasus for a car and it didn't work, so my guess is Lester kind of takes over the Pegasus vehicle and it's slot. Now I know it is a car video, but one motorcycle fact wouldn't hurt. The Hakucho drag revs so high that it goes off of the gauge. The Landstalker XL is based off of the Lincoln Navigator, which should make it a Vapid in the game, but technically it shouldn't be a Vapid because Lincoln is a separate brand, but they don't have a separate brand for Lincoln, so it should be Vapid at least. However, it is classified as a Dundreary. This is probably because Dundreary is already a name brand in GTA Online, and they just wanted to carry it on. I still find it odd why they didn't just call it a Vapid though. If you hold the handbrake and apply throttle in an electric car, you will either do a front wheel or a rear wheel drive burnout.
The Jester Classic has a livery which is backwards. This is especially interesting because this livery has been like this since it's been out and Rockstar still has not fixed it. Just about every JDM car has the same engine. As you can see here, I have a Toyota based vehicle, a Nissan based vehicle, and a Subaru based vehicle, all with the same engine. However, with slight differences. If you pop the hood in a chameleon, which I'm almost sure no one has, you can see that there is an engine. However, the chameleon is purely electric. I guess you can excuse the exhaust, but I'm not sure why they put an engine in it. No, it is not hybrid. It is fully electric and certainly very odd. Another interesting fact about the Chameleon is that when Rockstar removed the 186 some vehicles, they claimed that all the vehicles were lesser used. However, I have literally never seen anyone drive a Chameleon. I'm pretty sure only I have ever drove a Chameleon in my lobbies. So I'm not sure why this wasn't removed, but cars like the Entity per se was. The Camacho has an option to put bags in the bed. These bags, however, even though they look like they're made out of cloth or leather or something, have the same collision and sound as metal. The Arbiter GT is a car that can wheelie pretty much indefinitely as long as you don't hit anything. The new Rattle Trophy truck has an option to put exhaust on the back that have a cap on it that will actually lift up when you apply throttle. Now this one isn't really a fact, but among car people, it is generally agreed upon that the Shafter V12 has the best sounding exhaust in the game. Personally, I prefer the T20. The Taipan is a pretty nice looking car, but it has a feature that makes it look horrible. In the back, there is a license plate mounted on the rear side. And I thought this was because Rockstar needed to put a license plate, but Rockstar has released cars that don't have license plates. So I'm not sure why they had to put one on this car, but they did. Most trucks have optional lights you could put on the roof that actually function. However, most older cars have lights that you could put on the roof that don't function, so it was probably a frame rate issue or something that they only could do on newer gen consoles. Although the Insurgent probably weighs around 5 tons, the Up and Atomizer can push it around pretty easily. The Technical Aqua can float on water because of the two tanks on the back. However, it doesn't have a snorkel and the grill is pretty much level with the water. So how is water not flooding the engine and destroying the vehicle? The Blazer Aqua is extremely hard to flip over. They probably made it like this because if you were to go in the water and then flip it over and then activate the amphibious mode, it could cause some weird glitches that Rockstar doesn't want to deal with. But that is only a theory. The Wastelander looks like it could hold a decent amount of people or at least a car, especially because there are literally ropes in the back to secure a car down. However, it cannot carry people in the back without them falling off or ragdolling off, and it cannot carry a car either, so I really don't understand why Rockstar added this. It is certainly strange and a shame that it is like this because this car could have had a lot of potential. The Ruiner 2000 has a parachute on it, which is obvious, but did you know that the parachute can't actually be accommodated in the roof? The roof is far too thin to have a big, pretty decently sized parachute on it, so it makes no sense and kind of an oversight by Rockstar. Different types of wheels have different types of tire lettering on them. That is to say, high-end wheels have a different tire lettering, 
muscle wheels have different ones tuner wheels have different ones suvs have different ones and i do think it's pretty cool that rockstar actually took the time which in 2013 was a lot of time because they were really trying to push gta 5 out already to actually make this a thing the Patriot Mill spec has a pretty surprisingly luxurious interior. This is obviously a far cry to the real life version, which did not have much luxuries at all and was strictly used for military purposes. Even in the top tier civilian versions like the Alpha, the interiors were not this nice and they most definitely didn't have diamond stitched leather seats. However, the rest of the interior is pretty good. If you do a merge glitch on the Buccaneer Custom, the roof will bug out extremely and kind of have this checkered glitched look to it. I think it's pretty cool, but obviously it's not supposed to be in the game because of how buggy it looks, so you can only really get it by merging. But it does look pretty cool, as not every car has a custom glitch like this. The same merge glitch can also be done on the Mesa. However, in the Mesa's case, it takes off the roof rack and some other things and makes it look, in my opinion, a lot better. I'm not sure why Rockstar doesn't just let us take all the stuff off because some people probably would prefer it, but it is what it is. If you submerge your car like I'm doing here in shallow water where you can pick it up with the cargo bob, you can take it out with the cargo bob and the car will look perfectly fine, but obviously not be able to run because it will submerge in water. This is especially interesting if you're a bit of a troll because you can take your friend's car if they go AFK for like 10 minutes, you can pick it up with a cargo bob, submerge it in this relatively shallow water at the beach, and then take it out and put it in the exact same spot. And if you do well enough, they won't even know and they'll think their car is bugged until they call Morse Mutual, of course. The Vigero ZX has a hood option that looks like one of that of a Corvette C7. I think it's pretty cool that they added that on the Corvette's little brother, which is the Camaro. And I actually use it because the engine model for this car looks pretty great. The Buffalo STX has an optional hood that, at the time, was off of a Hellcat. This is especially interesting because we don't have a wide body option to turn it into a wide body Hellcat charger. Which is unfortunate because how are you going to give us like half of what we need for a wide body charger? Uh, but you kind of didn't give us the wide body. However, I do appreciate Rockstar for adding this hood because it makes the car look a bit more realistic. One of the cavalcades has an optional sound system that you can put in the back. However, unfortunately, to my great dismay, the sound system doesn't actually increase the volume of the music you're playing inside the car or make it sound better or anything. It's purely just for looks. This sucks because I can't imagine it's that hard to make music on the inside of a car sound louder on the outside, so it's very sad. The 10F looks extremely close to its real-life counterpart, the Audi R8. I imagine the only way Rockstar gets away with realistic-looking cars like these is the fact that it simply just doesn't have an Audi badge. The Tyrant is the biggest supercar in the game. I definitely do not think it is the longest because the Diveste 8 is considerably longer than it, but the only thing that gives it the title of the biggest supercar is its horizontal length. As far as I know, the Imperator is the only car in GTA Online to have a deleted passenger seat. The Impaler is a car that is supposed to be customized as an Arena War vehicle. However, you can choose to not do that and keep it completely stuck. If you do want boost, however, you will need to upgrade it to the Arena War variant, which is what I have done here, and I have added no upgrades and I've taken off everything like the ramp and everything on it that makes it look like an Arena War car. This stretch of road here on the map is probably one of the worst roads to drive if you are trying not to crash. I say this because this is one of the roads where NPCs are programmed to try to hit you. They will pretty obviously try to cut you off in a direction they were not intending to go in. However, their actions are pretty consistent, so you kind of just react to them and next time they will do the exact same thing. The ISSI has headlights that look like they are supposed to be from a Porsche 996-911. These are often referred to as the runny yoke headlights. The Coquette is supposed to be based on a C7 Corvette. However, maybe it's just me, but aside from the side profile, I never saw the similarities and to me, it looks nothing like a C7 Corvette. No traffic light in the game has arrows indicating that you have the right of way to turn. You kind of just have to yield, hope they don't crash into you, and hope for the best. The SWAT truck and the money truck have doors in the back that you can open with C4.
The Drift Tampa is supposed to be a drift car, hence the name. However, it gains grip way too soon and doesn't allow you to drift, making it a bad drift car. There is a drip feed vehicle called the Inductor, which is a new bicycle, which for the first time in GTA Online's life, a new bicycle will be added to the website, which has not changed since 2013. A lot of people hate on the Dominator GTX because they think it's supposed to be based on a Ford Mustang. And only half of that is true. As you can see in the picture, it is supposed to be based on a body kit for the Ford Mustang, not the Ford Mustang in its original form. The Issy Rally has the exact same interior as the Granger 3600. This is interesting because the Granger has the interior of its real life SUV. So technically, the Issy has an interior of a SUV in real life. The SUV in question is a Chevy Suburban. The Jester is based off of an Acura NSX, a second generation. However, as most people probably know, the NSX had a hybrid V6, but in GTA, as you can see here, it is an eight cylinder. The Cherberek is often referred to as the cardboard car because of its customizations. However, if you actually shoot the cardboard, it sounds like metal, even though it is clearly supposed to be cardboard and some parts even no clip, they have no properties at all to them and you can shoot straight through them. The Sugoi has accents on bumpers and skirts that are optional on it that can be painted red. These skirts and bumpers make it look like the real life Civic Type R. I'm a big Honda fan, so I really appreciated this. If you have a metallic primary color and then put on a flat secondary color like a matte paint, the pearlescent will transfer to the matte part of the paint. What you probably didn't know was that this is not intentional and has stayed in the game since 2013. The SM722 has a very unique hood opening that opens at a very short angle that pretty much no other car has, or no supercar at least. As long as a car does not have bulletproof tires, it can be stanced. All you do is shoot the front of the front wheels in between the wheel well, and then shoot the back of the back wheels in between the wheel well. NPC cars can be completely restored back to their former condition if you just start a job, do a couple of things, change a couple of settings, and then leave the job. This is especially useful for cop cars because you can't take them into the custom shop to repair it yourself.
you can change the pearlescent on a matte paint, which you usually can't do. This is done by doing some very strange things, which I'm doing in the video, and then you get the result that you're looking for. Rockstar recently removed 180 some vehicles from GTA Online. However, if you are a fan of SUVs, you should be fine because very few SUVs were removed. The only big one that I can recall is the Lincoln Navigator, which I really liked and some people may have not bought yet, but that one was removed. And that's pretty much the only substantial SUV that was removed. The same fact about SUVs cannot be said about motorcycle enthusiasts, as there are only five choppers that you can buy in the game. Now, those are only the ones you can buy. You can obviously still find motorcycles on the streets, but there, were, there was literally a whole DLC about bikers, and they removed like pretty much all the bikes from that DLC, which I find extremely ridiculous. At any given point, you can own up to 326 cars in your possession. This is not including any special vehicles or whatever. This is just cars they can buy from legendary motorsports, Southern San Andreas autos and whatnot. You know, not weaponized vehicles or whatever. That is a lot of cars. And with the recently removed 186 vehicles, there aren't many cars that can fill those slots. So it's up to Rockstar to keep on adding more cars for us to fill our garages with. The Drift Yosemite surprisingly has pretty good handling for being a purpose-built drift car. Now it is unique in terms of handling. It doesn't have good handling like the BR8 or a F1 car. It has good handling, but you kind of have to catch it in a turn. It is still good though. The Peyote Gasser is obviously a drag built Peyote, but it's meant to be more of a resto mod, not really an original. And as you can see here, the interior is, you know, an interior. It's pretty old, nothing special in terms of interior. Um, you see this a lot in older cars, but it is what it is. It does have carbon drag seats, however. While this is a resto mod rebuilt car, the original Peyote and this one have the same exact interior, aside from the carbon bucket seats. I mentioned this in a previous video, but it's still good, so I'll bring it back here. There are two different types of chromes in the game. There is the chrome that the stock wheels have on some cars, and there is the chrome that we get on the chrome wheels. The chrome that comes by default on these cars with these wheels cannot be achieved, and it does have a slightly more shiny look to them, which I personally really like. I'm not sure why Rockstar did this, because I think for game reasons, it would be easier to just have one type of chrome, because then it doesn't have to get mixed up with the other one, but Rockstar is Rockstar. On Arena War cards, you can equip Nitrous, and I'm pretty sure most people know that. But did you know that while you reverse and use Nitrous, it doesn't slow you down whatsoever? You go the same exact speed. Because it does apply so much torque when you are going forward, I would at least expect some sort of pushback when you are reversing, but there is none.
please excuse me if I'm being ignorant. I'm not too educated in terms of NASCAR and how their cars function, but the Haring Hellfire and in fact all the other Haring cars have no grill, it's just a sticker. But they still have an engine that needs to get cooled off by air. So how does air get to the engine? Now I will say there are vents on the bottom that I'm pretty sure are functional, but it's not that much. And wouldn't they want as much air going into the engine as possible? But once again, I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Similar to the Rattel and its functional opening valve exhaust, the Haring Hellfire actually has an animation on the roof. It's these air brakes that deploy every time you hit the brakes over a certain speed, and I think it's really cool. Just a reminder that this is only possible on next generation consoles because of the higher FPS. If this was ran on the Xbox One or PS4, this would probably make your game go down like 10 frames per second. The Astron, as well as many other cars, has a completely unique wheel design, and these designs are unique to the cars usually and are not sold separately on other cars. However, some of these are in the street and track category. Some of those wheels come from previously existing cars, but most of them do not. And it's a shame because these wheels are very nice looking and we likely will never get them on cars that were not the original car at least. However, you never know because once again, Rockstar is Rockstar and they may just reuse assets for a new wheel category, which I personally probably won't be even mad about. Most wheels have zero physical properties and have zero collision as well. Now stick with me here because this is a long one, but the Hot Ring Hellfire is the most recent Hot Ring car, the Evron is the second most recent, and the Hot Ring Saber is the oldest out of the three. The Hot Ring Saber is number 45, and the Hot Ring Evron is number 46, and the Hot Ring Hellfire is number 44, but it is the most recent Hot Ring car to release. So shouldn't it have been number 47 to follow along? Because why would this be a previous number if it is the most recent car to release? Shouldn't the Saber have the lowest number out of the three and then go up from there? I'm not too sure. Let me know what you guys think. There is a strange bug sometimes when calling the mechanic in certain spots of the map that for some reason just completely give you an error when requesting a car. A lot of Mercedes-based models in the game have a V12 badge on the side of them. For example, the dubstep also has this same badge. However, when you pop the hood on these cars, they do not absolutely have a V12. To me, it looks like a pretty low pixel V8. The Sanctus is the only motorcycle in the game to by default come with colored headlights. The Sanctus also has a unique exhaust animation. The Ruiner ZZ8 comes with an optional T-Top, which is obviously glass and glass can break. So if you shoot out the glass, it still retains the physical properties of a hard top when you throw something on it. For example, a grenade. Some of you might know this one already, but I only found out very recently that you can actually lower and raise the roof of a convertible car in the interaction menu. This had to have been added in at least the previous three updates because I don't remember this being in the game for very long. The Brutus is an arena ready vehicle that you can kind of just make crazy and have crazy spears on it and a ram or you can do none of that and turn it into a pretty low key off roader. Whenever I go off roading with friends, this is definitely a car I pull out because they're like, what the hell is that thing? They have no idea. This is just a Brutus without all the crazy mods on it. 
The Brutus also has a tintable front windshield, which not a lot of cars do. I believe only two other supercars have the capability to do this, that being the Vision and the Tesseract. The Huntley S is obviously based on some sort of Bentley SUV, but it was released in 2013, back when Bentley didn't yet release the Bentayga. So did Rockstar have the hindsight to foresee a Bentley SUV? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they saw a Bentley Bentayga concept or a Bentley SUV concept and they decided to mix and match it and put it into GC Online. Regardless of what they did, the Huntley S is the result. The Infernus has a pretty decent looking interior with stitching that I'm pretty sure matches the primary color of the car, but it used to be all red. I actually really prefer this interior, but back when Rockstar initially made GTA Online for next generation consoles, they updated it. With the use of a speed glitch, the Pariah used to be probably the fastest car in the game. Basically, all you had to do is pop the two front wheels, do a burnout, and you would be able to go across the map in literally minutes. Probably a minute flat now that I'm thinking about it. But unfortunately, this glitch was patched out and you cannot do it anymore. Some cars, particularly in the showrooms, come with black wheels by default. However, if you change the wheel to a different one and go back to stock wheels, they will go back to being alloy. So if you have a car with these wheels, unless you really like the wheel you want to change it to, don't do it because you will not be able to get it back. The Virtue, along with some other cars, has vents on the inside that makes it look like it's lit up. I'm not sure if it's just reflective or anything, but if Rockstar could pull off this look in this car, why couldn't they do it in the Jubilee, which is based off the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, that is famous for having the Starlight Headliner. I think that would be really cool, but unfortunately, we never got it. This car has probably the smallest displacement V12 I've ever seen. It also has a pretty strange door opening animation. The Stinger is a soft top, and usually soft tops are convertibles. However, this is not. It makes no sense. You can't do it in the interaction menu. You cannot do it by holding down right on the D-pad. I'm not sure what it is on other consoles. The only way you could do it is by taking it to Los Angeles Customs and taking the roof off there, which is incredibly annoying. The Thrax has a French flag on it, which makes sense because Bugatti is a French brand. And right here is the in the correct order, blue, white, and red. And on the other side, it is in red, white, and blue. Proper flag etiquette in the US at least is to have the flag position in the highest place of honor. So on a car, that is the front. So the stars will always be facing the front of a car. That's why in real life, whenever you see Jeep Grand Wagoneers, the stars are facing the front of the car, even if it looks backwards. So shouldn't it be blue, white, and red on the other side still? Because at least in the US, that is proper flag etiquette. But let me know, maybe in France, it is different. A lot of cars have a start button, so whenever you get inside of them, you, you know, press the start button to start the car. However, there is no special animation for any car that has this button, and you turn the key in the ignition just like a traditional car. Now this one is more of a personal fact, but the highest speed I've ever achieved in a land vehicle is in the RE7B. This is because the RE7B used to have a speed glitch back when it came out as part of cunning stunts, and you would go incredibly fast when going downhill and it was incredibly easy to do and a lot of people did it and i still to this day have never gone faster than that a lot of engines in rear engine cars have zero collision whatsoever The ETR1 is supposed to be at least based on the Lexus LFA. However, Rockstar took some creative liberties and in doing so kind of mimicked the headlight look of the Bugatti Chiron.
The X80 Proto has a wing called the GT wing, which already costs a lot of money in and of itself. However, you can pay an extra $10,000 to add two little pieces on the end of this wing, making it the enhanced GT wing. Ooh. The Comet Retro Custom is probably a prime example of Rockstar adding in a car that was heavily influenced by the players of GTA Online. I say this because in a fan-made trailer dubbed Tuners and Outlaws made by GTA Wise Guy, it's a very well-known trailer, he had a wide-body Comet in the trailer and everybody wanted it and Rockstar actually added that car but just the older version, which I'm fine with. On any car that has a transparent hood, you can pop the hood and break it off. But when it breaks off, it kind of just disintegrates and it goes invisible. But it is still there. We know this because if you shoot it, it moves and you can see the bullet moving on the ground. It's quite funny. The Zion has a roll cage option that when installed actually changes the engine as well, making it a twin turbo model. This is how it looks without it. And this is how it looks with the roll cage installed. The Armored Pentagon is the only car in the game that you cannot buy on any website. It has to be unlocked by completing all original casino missions as a leader. You are then gifted it at the docks by Agatha Baker. The Drift Tampa is a pretty muscle looking car to me. This being said, this is in the sports category, which I personally think is a huge mistake. This should be a muscle car because how cool would it be seeing this car pop a wheelie? Rockstar probably did this because it is very low to the ground for a muscle car, but who cares? You can cleanly destroy all windows on a car by driving over a C4 and then detonating it. This can obviously only be done with armored cars because that's the only way to survive the explosion. But once it's done, it does look pretty cool. You can hold a grenade in your hand and pull the pin and hold it until it blows up in an armored car, yet you will not die, your arm will not get blown off, nothing will happen. The Conjali has a livery called Galaxy. This was only available during Christmas of 2017 and is extremely rare now. However, this didn't stop glitchers by putting it on different cars, which I actually think looks pretty cool, but it is strange that the Conjali was the originator of this livery. The T20 has active arrow on it. However, this being said, this does not affect performance at all and does not give you any benefit. However, in some cars it does, and it's quite strange that they pick and choose which cars get this benefit because all of them have the arrow, the active arrow spoiler, but it is strange. The Neo at the time of recording this video is the only car to be under the Visser or Viser brand. Maybe this will change as more updates come out though. When the Divestier first leaked, people thought that the back were actually thrusters on it, like jet thrusters, similar to the Vigilante. However, now that we have it, we now understand that it's just a pretty dramatic looking exhaust, but it would have been cool to have jet boosters on it. Any car that has flush door handles, that is, the door handle is completely equal to the car, does not pop out at all, does not have unique animation, and you still open it as if it was popped out. The Zeruso has taillights, although it is based on a different car that mimicked the look of the Bugatti Devo's taillights. This livery on the Omnis has sponsors on it, and in these sponsors is Fuica and Juan Bank, both of which are banks. So why would they let two bank brands on a sponsored car on the same livery? This would be like in real life if Chick-fil-A and Raising Cane's Chicken were on the same livery of a car. It's kind of contradictory because who do you want to sell chicken? Cane's or Chick-fil-A? I'm not too sure. It is very strange nonetheless. Cars that have a hood with no engine in them are classified as a trunk. Therefore, when you drive, the trunk or hood does not fly off. Even though the aerodynamics are still the same, it is still a body panel that's going against the air, but it will not go fly off no matter how fast you go. Here's a car with a traditional hood, for example.
The Brioso 300 wide body has probably the biggest intercooler I've ever seen in my life. The La Curese has a special taillight. That is because it illuminates and flashes pretty much all the time. If you're in the car, it will do this no matter if it is daytime or nighttime, which I think is pretty cool. The Issy Rally is classified as an SUV, even though it's more of a hot hatch. However, there is no hot hatch category in GTA Online. I do get that they classified it as SUV, but me personally, I probably would have classified it as sports or off-road because it's more of a crossover, if anything. You sit incredibly low in the Spectre. There are no visible body gaps or body panels on the Spectre as well. And a side effect of this is you cannot open any other door besides the front and the passenger door, which is incredibly stupid because this obviously has an engine and it obviously has a trunk. So why not let us open it? Similar to the Astron in my first video, the Bestia GTS has a shelf in the back that bullets just pierce right through. It has zero collision whatsoever. The 770 has a pretty unique looking engine bay because it has a lot of plastic panels covering a lot of components, which in and of itself is not really rare. In real life, you even see this a lot. Automakers try to hide the ugly parts of an engine just so the average consumer thinks, oh, my engine looks so beautiful. But under that is a lot of cables and whatnot. But here, it actually looks like a wall. It's not even like a covers, which is very strange. The Revolter in the game is classified as a Ubermacht, which in the game is BMW, but to me it has distinctive Cadillac styling, the biggest being the two vertical taillights in the back. Cadillac is famous for this now, they do it on pretty much every one of their cars, but why is it a BMW in the game? Shouldn't it be an Albany, which is Cadillac in the game? I'm not too sure. The shafted long wheelbase is classified as a sports car, but the Cognoceni is classified as a sedan, but the proportions are pretty similar. They're pretty much the same length, the same width, and they're based off of the same car as far as I'm concerned, the Mercedes S-Class. So why are they in different categories? If you put the top down in a convertible while having the trunk open, it will close in a pretty hilarious fashion. It kind of just slams down, which can be good for the hinges. It also speeds up the process quite a bit, which is a strange byproduct. You can change the name of Arena War cars, but only Arena War cars. I think a great feature to add would be to allow us to change the name on all cars because this would just be an incredible feature even for car guys, for everyone. I'm pretty sure everyone would appreciate it. And this feature is in the game already. It's already coded. It's already a thing, but it's only on select cars. So Rockstar, please give us this for all cars. When the Ardent first came out, people thought it would be able to go underwater because a previously leaked submarine car had been able to go underwater, so we thought this was it. However, it was not it and later released the Stromberg, which is the actual car that can go underwater. And they do look kind of similar at a glance, but overall, they don't look that similar and I'm pretty sure I, we were just in over our heads. This one was a pretty hot topic in my last video, but the Weevil Custom has off-road modifications that you can put on it. And I was saying how, why, why did they have this on this car if you cannot lift it? We should be able to lift it. And people were like, well, just because it's on it doesn't mean you have to put it on. I get that, but it's still on the car. So if someone wanted to go off-roading in this, they can't really do it because this car is too low. I get now that this is a drag car, not really an off-road car. So why have the off-road modifications in the first place? The barrage has a grenade launcher in the back. When you shoot it, however, the grenade pellets don't actually go down. They stay the same and they don't get depleted whatsoever.
We have many F1 cars in the game, two of which are older, but two of which are newer. The newer ones lack the Halo, which is now famous for saving multiple lives during multiple crashes in F1 racing because in a fatal crash it can save you because it keeps you in the car secure i'm pretty sure it's now mandated on all f1 cars because of its safety improvements but gta still has not caught up with the times and lacks the halo the turismo classic has a pretty unique exhaust setup where the exhaust is routed above the bumper and not below it with traditional cars The Cheetah Classic has zero badging on the outside to call it a Cheetah Classic. However, I have a theory for this. It is called only the Cheetah badged on the outside, at least as a Cheetah, because as far as Rockstar is concerned, as far as the universe of GTA Online is concerned, this is still a Cheetah, but it's just an older Cheetah. It's like in real life if they were to call it a Murcielago Classic or something. That's not the case. They just make a newer one and the older one becomes the Classic in enthusiast eyes. But it is still strange in GTA Online. The GP1 has hood catches in the front, but the engine is in the back, so why would it need hood catches in the front where the engine is not being pressured against the hood? There used to be a glitch when the Sterling GT was converted to be a HSW car to have bulletproof windows. This made it a very good car for grinding because it was insanely fast on the freeway and had bulletproof windows and that's really all you need in grinding missions. NPCs rarely shoot rockets at you so you don't really need any rocket protection and it was a pretty nice car to have but unfortunately it's a bygone era, it has now been patched. On the post loop, the trim color also changes the brake calibers as well as the interior if you're wanting to match the interior to your brake calibers for some reason. The Blista Compact's description on Southern San Andreas claims it has a V6. However, if we pop the hood, we can see that it is actually an inline four. The Stratum will randomly spawn if you find it on the street or if you buy it with different variations on it. And the maximum amount of variations you can get is six. It is incredibly rare to get a Stratum with all six variations on it. Some of these variations are a spoiler, a whip, and a sunroof. And to see one with all six is an incredibly rare sighting. The club has a German word on the back of it that directly translates to burger vehicle. Hello everyone, this is Present Day Falls. Uh, viewers on this video actually corrected me, German viewers. It actually stands for Citizen Vehicle. Google Translate is just bugging here, so yeah, ex excuse this fact, but it's still pretty funny that it directly translates to Burger Vehicle if you type it in like this, but yeah, it means Citizen Vehicle, not Burger Vehicle. My bad. The Penetrator is based on the Jaguar XJ220, which initially was supposed to have a V12 and it ended up having a V6 in real life. However, GTA retained the V12, which is pretty cool to see. Whoever worked on this car definitely knew their stuff, or maybe it was just a stroke of luck that they put a V12 in a car that was initially supposed to have a V12. The Tropos Rally has an engine that seems to be mounted crooked. I'm not sure if this is intentional or a mistake or whatnot just to make it fit into the car, but it is strange to see nonetheless. The Asbo is based on a pretty basic European car that looks like it would probably cost around $2,000. However, you could put a pretty high-end stereo in the back, which probably would cost more than the car. Most cars that have carbon fiber hoods actually are not carbon fiber hoods 100%, they are just carbon fiber wrapped hoods. The Glendale is based on an old Mercedes S-Class which is a prestige car and you know a pretty good car for the time period but it has a random strip of carbon fiber on the dashboard for some reason. They were not utilizing carbon fiber in interiors back in these times, so why is it on a car that is from this time period? I'm not sure. Rockstar logic, I guess. Now this one's really more of an opinion than a fact, but the Mamba has probably the best sounding startup in the game. Take a listen.
I don't know much about lowriders, but doesn't it seem kind of impractical to use nine car batteries to power the hydraulic system? Seems a bit pricey and frankly quite environmentally unconscious, so it's a pretty strange thing to do. The Monroe has a spare tire, but it's not the same wheel that comes stock on the car. Here I equipped the stock wheels and now let's pop the hood to see. The Stinger has a pretty wide hood on the back that takes up most of the car, and a lot of cars in GTA Online have this as well. However, when you pop it off, it creates a pretty crazy looking car design that you can do to most of these. As I was trying to gather facts about cars for this video, I was looking for truck facts, so I went to my truck garage, and then I, it dawned on me. Maybe it's placebo or whatnot, but there is no category for trucks. There is off-road, there is utility, but there is no category for trucks. And some, matter of fact, are actually in the vans category, which just makes no sense. The Viserys has an engine that is directly exposed to the interior of the car, which can be good for your lungs. This car, the Moonbeam, which is a van, is technically classified as a muscle car, but it can do wheelies. This thing that probably weighs around three tons can do a wheelie. The Anis brand in GTA Online and in GTA 5 has a similar looking logo to an old Mazda logo. Mazda went through many iterations of logos and they ended up sticking with one and that is the one that we have today. Coquette, which is based on Corvette in GTA Online, seems to be under its own brand, when in reality it should be a Declasse, which is a Chevrolet. This is funny because in real life, GM desperately wants the Corvette to be its own brand. They are coming out with a line of Corvette cars, I believe, or it's speculated or rumored, something like that. But they want Corvette to be as far from Chevrolet as possible. And in GTA Online, they actually followed in these footsteps, which is quite funny. The RC3000 has an option to take the roof off. If you use the convertible with this option, it will roll down the window. So technically, it's the only car in GTA Online to have the ability to roll down the windows, which is pretty cool. The S95's engine looks very similar to the real-life Toyota 86, Subaru BRZ, Boxer 4 that they ended up using. When you hit a car with the baseball bat, it rocks the car pretty violently and you could obviously tell by looking at it from a side angle. I'm not sure if hitting a car with a baseball bat in real life would rock it forward like this, but it's quite funny to see. The agency has two visitor parking spaces that no matter what are never taken. The Ignis has an engine, as most cars do, but the weaponized Ignis does not have an engine because the turret goes where the engine would be, and we know this by going to Rockstar Editor and checking underneath the turret in the weaponized Ignis, there is no engine whatsoever, the weapon completely replaces it.
Newer players of GTA Online may not know this, but the website Southern San Andreas and Legendary Autos actually had unique backgrounds for each car back in the old days. I actually really preferred these backgrounds instead of the boring plain white background we have on Legendary and the boring storage unit background we have on Southern San Andreas. The old backgrounds had a lot more character and I personally would like them back. This method though is probably unsustainable for Rockstar because they can't get a unique location for every car. They release so many cars to get a unique location each time would be crazy. They probably could, but they're too lazy to do that, of course. So we're stuck with what we have. The Cyclone 2 is probably the laziest renaming of a car I've ever seen. They literally just took the Cyclone and added in Roman numerals 2 to the end of it. Can you get any lazier than that? This one is more of a tip, but when you're making trim colors, the interior color of your car, don't just make it white every time. Every time I see the interior of a car colored white, it's just like, be more creative than that. This car is green here and it has a cream pearlescence. So I feel like to blend it better, I chose a tan interior and I really do think it looks great. Once again, not really a fact, but please be creative with your cars. Don't just choose white or black in your interior every time. The Comet S2 probably has the tiniest back seats I've ever seen in my life. Funnily enough, automakers in real life actually do this to their cars. They'll make tiny back seats that no person could reasonably fit in, and people claim it's for different reasons and whatnot, but I think it's just because they want to claim it has back seats, and even though they're impractical, they are still there. The Common S2 also has a tire monitor, but it does not move, it does not function whatsoever, it's just kind of static there. I do think it's pretty cool just looking at it, but to actually implement a feature to have actual tire monitoring in the game will be quite, I mean, non-important for Rockstar. They have much better things to do than a tire monitor, but it would be cool to see nonetheless. The Tailgater S is based off of the Audi RS3 in real life, and the Audi RS3 has a 5-cylinder that is known to make crazy power, it's absolutely awesome, but in GTA Online, it has a V8, which would have been cool to see in the real life version, but I don't know, I just feel like me personally, the 5-cylinder just fits the RS3 so perfectly, I'm glad we got the 5-cylinder and not just a 4-cylinder or something, but it is what it is, GTA Online has a V8. You can skip the small cutscene of Los Angeles Customs every time you enter by bringing up your pause menu while you're driving in. You can stand in the Guardian's truck bed and not fall off. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of the only trucks in the game that you can do this with. Also, shout out to this fan who helped me out on Xbox. His name is L16. He told me to call him this random guy or whatever, but his name is L16. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the help from my fans. The Click Wagon is a two-door wagon, technically a three-door because it has a trunk, if you want to count that or whatever, but it is under the four-door category, which is quite strange because it only has two doors. A hot topic in my last video was the reasoning why Rockstar has backwards liveries on some cars. People claim that it is because in Japan, Rockstar, I mean not Rockstar, people in real life would have their liveries backwards on one side and that's just how Japanese culture is. But that could be the case, but honestly, I think Rockstar is just lazy and forgot to flip it on some cars because I believe I've seen it on an American car as well. I forgot which one it was, but yeah, you could be completely right. But honestly, I think it's because Rockstar is just lazy. But whoever said that in the last video, good catch. When you shift from passenger to driver in some cars with a stick shift or even an automatic that sticks up pretty high, you do a pretty uncomfortable thing. I'm not sure I'd want to do this in real life, but I mean, whatever you got to do, I guess. This one's more of a personal fact, but I have spent over $1.5 billion on cars. 
I'm not even sure how that's possible. I'm pretty sure all the cars in GTA Online don't even amount to $1.5 billion. Um, so it's quite strange, but I guess I got it somehow. All legit too, for the most part. If you drive a car near a UFO, the radio will become extremely staticky and the radio station will also change rapidly. Unfortunately, I'm unable to pick up the static on the way I currently record, but you can see the radio station changing by itself. There's a bobblehead in the game that has a mask that says, please stop me. This is a real mask that was only attainable for a couple of days back in 2014. I believe you had to complete a last team standing mission and win as the team. And then you would attain this mask. This mask is a nod to another Rockstar title, Manhunt. In the main menu, there's a promo that says some returning vehicles are once again available for purchase. The Sanctus is included in this set of vehicles, but did you know that any seasonal vehicles are always available for purchase if you purchase them at least once, regardless of the time of year. So if you purchase the Sanctus right now, you will always be able to purchase it. When the weather is transitioning to its weird orange-green tint, the floor becomes wet before you see rain fall. Matter of fact, you can even see rain droplets hitting the floor, but when you look up, there is no rain. Kind of a small oversight by Rockstar. Last year in December, when the weather changed to start snowing, it was discovered that vehicles' mirrors didn't actually reflect the snow. This issue has been patched as part of this new weather change that we have now because if you look at the mirror now, it does reflect the appropriate weather. A small bug that very little people noticed anyway. The Frankenstein is a convertible bus. You cannot put the roof up, leaving a wide open gap behind the driver and front passenger. However, if you go in first person, the sound is muted as if the car is completely covered. Take a listen. Just as a refresher in case you didn't watch my other interesting Carfax videos, any car that is classified as a muscle car can pop a wheelie. This includes the Lurcher, which is an incredibly long muscle car. And I say muscle in quotations. The body in the back of the lurcher has eyes that glow in the dark. These eyes do not glow in the daytime. The Brigham has a one of one unique bug catcher. The bug catcher is a skull where its jaw will actually open whenever you give throttle, which is insanely cool and I really love the attention to detail. Rockstar has been doing a lot of these unique customizations on cars, so keep an eye out for more of these in the future. The Brigham remains as the longest muscle car, with the Lurcher barely being shorter than it. Use the lane markings as reference. The new Vinewood Car Club Garage lets you store up to 100 vehicles, and that's great and all, and you get to keep access to them until your membership expires, but you will not be able to move them around. So it's good to know that if your membership does expire, you will still have the cars. After a decade of us asking for a functional tow truck in GTA Online, Rockstar has actually added one, but we can only pick up cars that it wants us to pick up. Here I'm trying to pick up my personal vehicle and it just is not working for some reason. Rockstar must have blacklisted it.
But if I go over to the vehicle it wants me to tow, then I can tow it. So it does kind of suck that after all these years they've added the tow truck, but we can't tow our own cars. Behind me is the Cavalcade XL, which has not released yet. It is unreleased, but it did feature in a mission last week when you were able to steal the Turismo Maggio. And people found a way to glitch it into their garage, thus having it as a personal vehicle, even though it's not out yet. Then from there, you can buy from them from the LS Carmi and make it yours. A very rare instance of us legitimately being able to get an unreleased car without the use of mods. You can buy modded vehicles from the LS Carmi, but it may not come as you fully expect it to. Here, for example, I have this modded Mesa, you know, because of these Benny's wheels and because it has a Yankton plate, but it did not have the off-road gear on it when I first saw it in the Carmi, but when I bought it off the guy I bought it from, and it was delivered to my garage, the off-road gear appeared back on it. Rockstar must have some system to detect certain modded modifications because it let me keep the Benny's wheels, but it did not let me keep the no off-road gear. Kind of odd. To keep it in its entirety, you would probably have to do a give cars to friends glitch. If you have a police car and you dress up as a police officer, you can pull people over in free mode and carry out your police duties. Nothing like serving up justice to the innocent citizens of Los Santos. One of your auto shop staffers is reading a clipboard that says absolutely nothing on it. Well, it does have words, but they're completely indecipherable. The rear of the Dominator GT looks so close to the real life Mustang GT that it is based off of the S550. I somewhat wonder how Rockstar was able to get away with this even having the GT badge on there but I believe it's because Ford does not have the rights to the GT badge because many different cars in real life also have GT badges on them as well. A rare instance of Rockstar being able to do this and legally get away with it. The Click is one of the only vehicles in the game that has a livery that is 3D. I don't know why they couldn't just add it as a roof option, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. A lot of people really do not like drifting in snow because they say it's worse, but it does make your drifts longer. So if you are a good drifter and you can hold your drifts long enough, you can extend them even longer. However, if you're on a pretty tight track, then it will be hard to drift because it's very hard to modulate your speed because of the loss of grip as well. For this reason, I do somewhat enjoy drifting in the snow, but we still should have the option in the race to disable it. The Astro GZ is based off of an old 2000s Toyota Camry, and I cannot think of a lesser requested car by the community than this Camry. I mean, it's a cool car and all, it's relatable if anything, but I'm pretty sure they only added it because it will likely be in GTA 6. We can assume this because it does look pretty realistic to its real-life counterpart, the Toyota Camry from its era, and that seems to be the general direction that GTA 6 will go towards. Realism. There's a garage in Grapeseed and a garage in Blaine County that absolutely no one buys. Mainly because both of these can only store two cars. And I get that they're small, but Rockstar has bended what looks on the outside to, compared to what's on the inside very much. They've done it before, and if it had 10 slots, it would definitely be a bonus. In the police rights description, it clearly states that this vehicle can only be modified in properties you own, leading you to assume that you can modify this vehicle. However, you cannot modify the police riot. So if you're expecting to buy it and then change the liveries maybe or put some new gear on it, you cannot do it. Only buy it if you really like it. And even then, you can find it for free up in Polito. The weaponized Ignis is the most expensive supercar in the game that you can currently buy, costing well over $6 million with HSW included. A very expensive car with a very high price tag, in my opinion, it's not really worth it, but some people may see it as a good car. Me personally, I think it's kind of meh. It is very fast though. The Buffalo has the most unique variations of the car in the game, including the regular Buffalo that you see here, the Buffalo S, the Buffalo EVX, the police Buffalo that is pretty rare to see, and of course the buffalo stx some people may say that the baller is the vehicle with the most unique variations but none of the variations are real unique they're just armored and long however things might change when the newest baller is released in gta online as part of drip feed every vehicle has a hitbox that is somewhat visible if you look at the rear bumper and if the car is pretty low however if you take it to a grassy area it becomes much more apparent
I'm pretty sure most people know now that money trucks are back in the game and you can rob them just like you could back in 2013 in the OG days of GTA Online. However, Rockstar purposely made it to where you have to click a button to pick it up and you cannot pick it up just by walking over it anymore as you could back in 2013. This is mainly to counter modding because then they could change the value of whatever you're picking up, making it much easier, but it's much easier to regulate if you have to click a button every time you pick it up. Not exactly a car fact, but interesting nonetheless in my opinion. Rockstar will soon change the sell values of vehicles, making them sell for pretty low amounts of money, similar to how much this Flash GT would sell for here. And while I do agree that this is a pretty scummy thing for, even for Rockstar to do, I do think that it will help them a lot to counter, you know, duplicating and everything. But duplication glitches will still happen and people will still do them. They will just be far less efficient than they were in the past. But honestly, we'll just have to see how things play out in practice. When you put down the top on the Vajero ZX convertible, there's this weird piece of glass that sticks out that does not retract with the roof. It absolutely pisses me off every time I drive this car and I cannot get past it. And this is on most Vajero ZXs. I've seen this multiple times. It is a common glitch. So yeah, Rockstar, please patch this. Maybe I'll drive this car more often. In the newest update, the Chop Shop DLC featuring Yusuf Amir, we recently got new license plates. They're pretty cool on certain cars that would otherwise be bland without the splash of color, and there are more license plates to release, so maybe we will see more in the future. Recent viewers of the channel will know that my car collection costs about around $400 million. And while that is a lot of money, it is certainly very achievable and I have pretty much every car in the game I could ask for, with a few exceptions that are no longer on sale unfortunately. So yeah, I think generally speaking, if you have $500 million, $400 million, you should be able to buy every car you want with a couple of duplicates as well. For cars you really like that is, but if you especially like supercars, maybe you buy three of the same supercar, you may need a bit more money than that. And that is it everyone, 200 interesting car facts in GTA Online that you hopefully, maybe, probably didn't know. Hopefully you enjoyed this compilation and have a great day. Goodbye.